Questions for Sandra? Yeah. Can, um, I'm gonna, we have a half an hour break, which is lovely and generous of the organizers. And so I'm gonna ask, um, there's a lot we can engage Sandra on, I know. Um, so if, I'm gonna ask people to kind of catch her at that break, if we can. Okay, we have, we have eight minutes, and I want to, let's just popcorn this. Um, without a lot of discussion, I want to, I want to just gather some of the emerging LC issues as you're seeing them and just get a list going because I think as the organizers have asked of us, this is a generative meeting. So what we want to start just naming some of the issues and then as the panels are coming up for the rest of the day uh, and tomorrow, that's where we're really going to be able to roll up our sleeves and, and dive into them and try to explore them and understand them better. So this is our, our list making uh, section. So just to just to pop out pop out ideas, what what are what are sort of um, unique LC issues in this space? Yeah, Sarah. just just to kick it off, um, um, I'm just wondering should because the biomedical research community has kind of an inherent um, altruistic mission of discovery as a means to improve health. It, are there some extra obligations or com, you know should, should be somehow be more compelled or held to involvement of citizen scientists as co-creators? Okay, um, obligations from scientific community um, and I think uh, that's I think great qu a great modeling of the use of the microphone as well, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, here and then back to your table. Um, I've tried to leave a way to phrase it. I think there's a tension between what makes the science go the fastest, which is sort of what the institutions might want, and the obligations of actually engaging individuals. Those things are, are going to often be in tension in terms of, of the governance of the data or, the, or of the research project. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, sure, thank you. Um, I'm actually sorry we didn't get to ask you a question because sometimes we want the, the whole body to hear. Um, but what I, what, I, what I think is really important uh, in listening to this is that um, when I see the data and I see all of that, I think about whether it's accessible. Um, I think about uh, race. I think about ethnicity. I think about poverty. I think about urban and rural communities. And um, I know that there is sometimes uh, discomfort of talking about things like race. Uh, but it's really important because how people access and use information is really important. Um, you had mentioned three different bodies of emerging uh, ways of looking at it, of a participation, and the one that was not there was um, uh, communities leading the research and inviting uh, scientists in as technical advisors. Uh, that wasn't there. The other thing is that sometimes what motivates people is livability, the nexus between their livability and, and the science. And so that's a, that's a really big issue that I don't think is characterized that way. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, and, and one more thing, crowd, crowdsourcing. Uh, crowdsourcing isn't always accessible to everyone, and people with the most privilege are the most likely to take advantage of it. Uh, and it isn't always accessible to low-income communities. Okay, Pearl and then Nick. Okay, I hit the right button. Um, one thing I think, um, we have spent uh, many decades lumping research. I think we have the collision of biomedical versus social behavioral where the regulations don't quite fit equally. My concern is the taxonomy, using Sandra's word here, that I think we're talking a lot of different types of research. I think one thing that Elsie could really help with is identifying within the taxonomy of what we mean or may mean by citizen science, what are the responsibilities and rules which come with these various types? Um, my fear is one size does not fit all here. We've already learned that with biomedical and social behavioral. And I think unless we really di dive down, um, we're going to just make that worse. Thank you. Nick, and then we're going to move to traditional, if there's anything from traditional LC that we should hang on to. Yeah, I think what uh, this morning's presentation revealed is that uh, we, um, the bulk of the citizen science efforts are fairly constrained, uh, several years, project-based, community, very localized community-based. And what we 
need to consider is the seventh, the seven generation decisions, the long term stewardship, and where that is different when we're talking about applied long term human health versus um, you know project based engagement that has a lot of these other efforts. Great, thank you. So I recognize we're cutting this short. Effie, did you have a new one? I, it's, it's gone a little bit back to the taxonomy question. We're lumping a lot of different things under one big term, citizen science. And I think one thing that's really interesting is that the roles that people have when they participate are very mixed in, in some of those activities. So the clear, the clarity we had before, there was a researcher or the participant, I think it's not there any longer. And that has implications about those people's responsibilities, duties, obligations we have to them, uh, which I think is an important area of LC. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. I recognize this is really taunting uh, to just charge through this. This is just our warm up. If you just remember, we have we have two days to work on this. So anything that we don't want to lose from some of what I'm just calling here some of our bread and butter LC LC work that we do. Anything we don't want to lose in this space as we move into this space. Uh, protection of subjects or participants. Um, are they? Is it different? But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, good. Anything else? Yeah. Um, Obligations related to data stewardship. Yeah. Respect for participants' interests and desires, i.e., not forcing them into things they don't actually want to do. Great. Um, sorry. Go here and then there. Yeah, go ahead. That, yep. Can you use your mic? Thank you. Potential for addiction to these games. So we talked about motivation, and the, the goal is always to incentivize our volunteers, get more and more, get them engaged. But do we reach a point where we're, you know, particularly in uh, citizen science projects involving children, are we are we gamifying too much? Okay, good. I'm going to put that back on the new list. Um, yeah, sorry, there was one in the back and then we'll come back here. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking of need for privacy and openness, so respect for you and your... Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, being sure to ask whose interests are being served by addressing the questions that are being addressed in citizen science. Thank you. Good one. Hey, uh, here and then Mildred and last comment. I just say independent review. Okay. Benefit sharing. Mildred, last comment. At this table, can I have one oh, too? Okay, 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 okay. I would just uh, institutional responsibility. Mildred, last comment. Uh, I think. It relates to some of these other ones, but sort of the um, uh, sort of scrutiny of um, commercialization and the interest in that come with that. Okay. Um, excellent. Well, the <laughs> um, no, we got, we're, we're like over time, and I promised I promised you you coffee. I, we do like to to keep on time, just because I think the breaks these breaks and the conversations you all can have uh, with each other are just as juicy and rich as the one we're having together. So please, um, thank you for your contributions. Thank you for playing fast and quick. I recognize we're cutting some things short, um, and we'll come back. Coffee is upstairs in the cafeteria. We'll come back at 11 for a, a, um, a panel, and we're going to want to hear a lot from you at that stage. So thank you.